Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. We are a little over a week from the first test against Ireland and Rusty Rasmus has given a press conference uh, shortly after announcing his Springbok squad to take on Ireland in the two match series as well as Portugal in the first ever clash between the two nations. Now today's press conference gave us a bit of an insight into uh, the squad, uh, why certain players have been picked, why certain players haven't been picked. Uh, a bit of an update on certain players in the squad, um, some injury news, as well as a couple of uh, uh, just generic sort of updates about life in the Springbok camp. And it was a very, very interesting press conference. So I just want to sort of break it down a little bit, talk about some of the key things. So we are all on the same page with regards to what is the situation with the camp and certain players going into next week and next weekend's clash. Before we do that, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, first of all, uh, Rassi Rasmus did provide an injury update um, saying that Edward van der Merwe and uh, Maxima Pimpi are being managed, um, but um, all, all accounts looks like they will be available for next week. Um, Edward van der Merwe had a shoulder injury, but we were at training and he was training with the squad and looked like he was running around absolutely no issues, so probably not taking contact, but uh, seems to be all right. Maxima Pimpi was also involved whilst uh, uh, Faf de Klerk did train away from the squad, was sort of doing some sort of stretches and strengthening exercise, so you can see he wasn't training fully. Um, Colby, however, has been completely uh, cleared, as well as Billy LaRue. So Billy LaRue and Chiz and Colby both fit to face Ireland next weekend. Some exciting news is that Kanan Moody, um, who fractured his finger uh, towards the end of the URC season, could rejoin the camp um, and should, at this stage, re rejoin the camp and potentially be fit to take on Ireland in that second test whether he'll play i doubt it i think we'll see him make a return against portugal would be my um uh, guess i think we'll see colby and kurt lawrence uh, in the the two test gets i uh, maybe an outside shot for edel van der merver um whilst Kane moody has been part of the setup i think not having played rugby for a while um we'll have only been in the camp for a week i'd be surprised if they were to play him against i in that second test but i think that they'll probably look to rotate uh, for the Portugal test and give him a bit of a run going into the rugby championship. He is also confirmed, by the way, captaincy for next weekend. Did not say that it is going to be a full-time captain, but uh, did say that he will captain and um, hit back at Racing Metro uh, after um, the owner, um, Jackie Lorenzetti, uh, took a go at Circles talking about the fact that he had gained weight and was transparent in the game that Racing played in that quarterfinal when they lost and uh, Rassi Rasmus has hit back, basically, by saying as follows. Sia will be captain, he will be sixth flank, and Sia has no injury. Sia is not fat, and Sia is not transparent, uh, with a bit of a chuckle. Um, so, yeah, basically, Sia Khaleesi will officially captain Island, um, the box for Ireland next weekend, also confirming he will start. Uh, so any sort of question marks regarding his fitness or his availability have been put to bed. Rassi Rasmus saying that he is fit and he's ready to go. He will start next weekend and he will have the captain's armband as well. Whether he will continue to have the captain's armband after next weekend, we shall wait and see. But at this stage, um, he is still going to remain the Springbok captain um, for now. Um, other sort of updates, he was asked a little bit about uh, Jan Hendrik Vessels, for example. He was a bit of a surprise inclusion, basically saying that unfortunately, you know, they can't, uh, control where the unions, how much the unions play these players or where they play them, for example, um, but did confirm that he has been part of that sort of uh, players of national interest, um, that's sort of the pony scheme, basically, uh, where SA Rugby actually contribute towards the salaries of these players, mentioning that they contribute a hundred thousand, a couple hundred thousand towards some of the uh, you know, the younger players, and, and even mentioned a couple million towards the, the sort of your starters, your World Cup stars, whether that's each. Uh, a year or a month, for example, or whatever the situation is, we don't entirely know, but we do know that SA Rugby do contribute towards the salaries of a Sia Khaleesi, for example. Well, not necessarily Sia Khaleesi because he um, is overseas, but somebody like Evan Etzebeth, for example, SA Rugby will contribute towards his salary at the Sharks um, as a player of national interest. Uh, also, interestingly, he has confirmed that Jahan Krobola is the genuine number three option at hooker in terms of the pecking order. So I uh, talked about the fact that they've worked with Andre Hugo Fenter, they've worked with Joseph Dweber, now they're working with Jan Hendrik Vessels, um, but said that we can all agree that Johan Krobola has been in great form and that he is the number three option. So if there were to be an injury to either of our hookers, Johan Krobola will be the man to step in. So interesting having uh, over there. Um, other updates, for example, uh, included... Um, conversation about some of the overseas players. I asked him about that in terms of tracking overseas players and how difficult it is. Uh, he could confirm that, for example, that there are 98 players currently on the Springbok radar that have been given 
roadmaps basically uh, or, or they've got roadmaps on and mentioned John Augustus being an option there and uh, talked about the fact that uh, he um, you know wasn't necessarily a starter for Northampton towards the end of the season which I don't think is entirely true started in the final for example um, and uh, but also they made more maybe more importantly mentioned the players up against the likes of the Cameron Harnacombe, Alric Lowe, Evan Ruiz, uh, Pepsi with Lazy, Jasper Visa for example I still believe that John O'Christus, I think, could make the squad, to be perfectly honest, but um, nice to get that sort of feedback uh, on him. Uh, it was an interesting sort of uh, press conference. Uh, the big thing as well, uh, he spoke about the, the sort of this rivalry with, with Ireland and the sort of Simon Zebra com uh, comments that he hates Ireland. Uh, very interestingly, apparently Simon Zebra actually missed Trusty Rasmus um, and, uh, you know, basically said that his comments were taken completely out of context. It's not exactly, it's, it's, an, it's not what he meant. And uh, Rusty confirmed, basically said, you know, he says he knows that Simon Zebo is very much uh, a sort of a, a joker type player. He obviously worked with Simon Zebo at Munster, which is why they would have a relationship. Um, and said that uh, apparently Simon Zebo offered to go on air and clear the clearest comments. Uh, Rusty Rasmus said, no, don't worry, uh, leave it out there. Let's spice it up again. So Rusty Rasmus very much wanting to build up the Island series, add some spice, and uh, that's what we're doing. As I say, as much as I think, if we're being brutally honest. There's not a lot of animosity between the Irish and the South African fans. Um, maybe not. The, maybe maybe the, maybe for the fickle or, or, or the more sort of part-time fans. But I think the genuine rugby fans. Um, we've actually had really good dealings. To be fair, I had a really good time when I was in France. I, I met a lot of Irish fans. Uh, got along with them very well. Um, they're incredibly complimentary about the the South African team, the Springboks in general. Uh, so I think there's actually a very good nature and sort of a competition between the Ireland and the Bok fans. Uh, obviously, there's going to be the two extremes on both sides. Take it a little bit too far. Um, but I am enjoying the fact that this is becoming a rivalry and that even if it is a very respectful rivalry, it is a rivalry. And I, I, love, I love a bit of theater, you know, um, a little bit of uh, a bit of extra stuff in terms of adding the spice to it. You know, a couple of small battles, Damien Delendi going after the Irish media, uh, you know, sort of implying they're being a bit cocky. I love the fact that there is a little bit of theater going into this, a uh, bit of sort of pantomime villains kind of being uh, created. So I'm all in for that, to be perfectly honest. Uh, to check out the full uh, press conference, check out the channel. We've also got a press conference coming up with Sasha Pema and Gomez Zulu tomorrow morning. Such a nice guy. I um, managed to ask him a lot of questions. Uh, so it was really cool to catch up with him and uh, get his views. I mean, absolutely class uh, human being. Comes across so well. Very normal, down-to-earth guy. Lives in the digs uh, with a couple of other buggers. So, you know, he's just the most typical normal guy, I think. But... Uh, very much a professional rugby player, and this professionalism comes through in the interview as well. So keep an eye out for that tomorrow morning as well. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you soon.